What's up YouTube, my name is Kenneth. Today I want to show you guys the world's largest 2x2 two two Rubik's Cube. I built it, I designed it, I want to show you guys how I built it, how I designed it. I'm going to show you guys the inside and then I'm going to solve it for you. So I hope you guys enjoy and yeah, let's get started. So first I want to talk about the design of my giant 2x2 two by, two, uh, by starting with actually a normal size 2x2. Two two. And actually this isn't a normal size 2x2, two two. this is a large 2x2. Two two. It's actually a 55mm 2x2 two two, and most 2x2s two are smaller than that. But uh, this 2x2 two two and my giant 2x2 two two actually aren't very different. They're very similar uh, in the way that they're designed. So um, yeah, first off, let me show you guys uh, what the QBs actually look like. So here's a scaled model of the QB, and you can see it's kind of like it's a cap uh, that extends away from a center 3x3 three three and uh, makes a large corner piece. So you can see I have a center, kind of a, a core 3x3 three three in the middle, and then I have a bunch of these caps that super glue onto the core three by three, and that's how I made the cube. And the idea was to get the cubies the exact same size as the core cube inside of it. And um, so that's how it scaled. So uh, what I did first was I made a prototype to make sure it was gonna work. So here's the prototype, uh, and you can see here's the, the cubie, and they're glued to an internal three by three inside. And so I wanted to test that this was actually gonna work. And I was actually really pleased with this prototype. I actually did the math a little bit wrong. It wasn't scaled perfectly for this size cube. Uh, and so uh, I was a little disappointed in that. That's why there's these pretty large gaps here and it allows you to see the three by three in the middle. Um, but yeah, so uh, having a prototype really helped ensure that I could deal with things like the center layers. Uh, one thing you have to worry about is that the center layers can get misaligned. And so you need to come up with some kind of like alignment mechanism that will allow you to kind of deal with that for a two by two. So the thing you have to worry about is if you're only moving it, like if you only have extensions on the corners, so you're only holding the corners when you turn the puzzle, what happens is sometimes this will happen and the center layer of the three by three will uh, kind of be misaligned. So you have to deal with that somehow. And the way most two by twos deal with this is what you do is you get one corner piece. So let's take this corner piece here, the blue, white, red, and you bandage it to the nearby edges and the center uh, for that corner. So if we get the white side, we could bandage these pieces here. The red side, it's these pieces, and the blue side, it's this piece. So this corner piece now is connected not only to the near edges, but also the center, so it's connected to the core now. Wherever this corner moves, the core moves along with it. You can't misalign the edges anymore. You can't have a center layer moved a little bit because they are, it's connected to this corner piece. So anyway, doing that uh, is a way to solve this, and that's what I've done here. And so that's how you can keep the center layers aligned, and uh, it ends up turning really well. So once I was happy with this prototype, I decided I needed to scale it up. So I used this giant three by three as the core for my um, huge two by two. So each cubie, each corner cubie is the actual same size of this cube. And so this cube here is 18 centimeters. So each of the cubies are 18 centimeters. So the entire cube is 36 centimeters. And so that's the world's largest uh, three by three. Um, the previous largest was uh, by Tony Fisher. Uh, and I'll put a link to that in the description. I wanted to three, 3D print it myself. And so I needed a lot of PLA. In fact, to make one corner piece here, it would take over 500 milligrams of PLA. So I actually reached out to Matter Hackers and they were uh, gracious enough to help uh, kind of support this project. And they donated two huge uh, spools of uh, black of their black pro PLA and their 10 pound spools. So uh, I was able to kind of print all of these corners with confidence. I knew if I were going to, if I was going to screw one up, I would have plenty of PLA. So huge thanks to matter hackers. They have some really great PLA. They also are a great resource for information about uh, 3d printing. I've, uh, you know, looked at a lot of their articles, uh, trying to diagnose problems with my 3D printing and stuff like that. So anyway, there'll be a link in the description to Matter Hackers. Uh, check out their PLA. And also, uh, if you're interested in a 3D printer, they have lots of guides uh, about what 3D printers to get. Uh, you can buy it from them. They're in the U.S. They're actually local to me. I actually stopped by to their uh, their meetup. It was really great meeting them all. So yeah, huge uh, thanks to Matter Hackers for the help here. Um, so yeah, so I uh, had plenty of PLA. 
had to overcome quite a few problems in actually printing something this big, uh, this huge spool. I needed a spool holder. So it finally started printing and here's the first QB that got printed. Um, and you can see it didn't actually do that well. In fact, I could, I could rip this apart uh, really easily. Uh, so it didn't print very well. Um, I, uh, I had some issues uh, trying to print all of these. My printer kept jamming. I finally got it working and I uh, started printing them. It took two days per print. Uh, and it was taking way too long. Uh, so I actually uh, borrowed my dad's 3D printer so that I could be printing two at a time. And that really helped speed up this project. So uh, anyway, I got them going and printing and finally they all printed. So with all the printing done, I had to assemble the puzzle. And first I had to prep the, the giant three by three. And first off, these giant three by threes, they turn terribly. Uh, like they kind of have this ratcheting effect where they get caught kind of on the uh, these kind of seams of the edges and corners. Uh, and I didn't know what to do. So I actually reached out to Nathan Wilson and he has done a bunch of mods on these giant three by threes. So I knew he would know what to do. And uh, he recommended sanding these down, super gluing them together. Uh, and so that's what I did. I did that on all the pieces, I prepped them. Uh, then I, I painted the whole cube black. And that was because I didn't want to be able to see colors uh, kind of like you can see in my prototype in between the corner pieces. So I spray painted the, the actual giant three by three black. And then I was able to start like super gluing the, the puzzle all together. Once the cube was all together, I had to get the stickers. For the stickers, I actually reached out to Oliver's stickers. Uh, a lot of you guys know Oliver's stickers. They make um, all sorts of custom stickers as well as uh, replacement stickers and reached out to them. And they were nice enough to uh, cut these great looking stickers uh, and they cut them for the, my prototype as well as my giant three by three. And I think they look great. So huge thanks to Oliver. If you guys need custom stickers, check them out. There's a link in the description. Take a look. So anyway, I, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. As you guys can see, it looks really great. I decided to print a stand for it and Matter Hackers also sent me some red and white PLA so I could get my logo on the stand. Um, and uh, yeah, I made a, a mini stand as well. So here's my mini stand. And um, anyway, it's just turned out really great. I'm so pleased with it. I'm so excited about it. I think it looks great. Uh, so now I know you guys want to see this thing move. So I'm going to back up, stand up, and I'm going to solve it for you guys. So first, obviously, I uh, need to scramble it up. Okay, so there's my scramble. And let's get ready to solve it. Okay. There we go. That's what it's like solving the world's largest two by two. So I promised to show you guys the inside. So here's one of the, the pieces. Uh, you can see the corner piece is glued to that corner. Then we got a bunch of these edges. And then this is the special corner piece that's glued to the core. So wherever this corner piece goes, you can see it brings the whole core together. All of these pieces are all glued together. So these centers actually don't twist. The only centers that twist are this one, this one, and actually this one here, which I uh, had to unscrew. So let me show you guys how it goes together. So you get the edge piece and that can kind of go in like that. Then you can get a corner piece and put it right here and then kind of twist it in, add another edge piece, and there we go. So we've got our first two corner pieces together. I'm actually gonna just assemble the rest of the puzzle. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I sure enjoyed making this giant two by two. Uh, it was a lot of fun to design, build. Uh, and again, huge thanks to Matter Hackers for providing the PLA, as well as Oliver from Oliver Stickers 
Uh, he made it so easy. I just sent him the files and boom, I have these stickers in the mail. Uh, it was so easy. So check them both out in the description. Uh, I'll also have links to Thingiverse where I'll upload the files. So if you want to 3D print your own uh, at any scale, you can scale it up or down um, and it'll be available for you there. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. Thanks guys for watching. And of course, have a great day.